Hey guys, welcome to Hip Hughes History. I thought we would take a crack at explaining what's going on in Eastern Oregon where a militia group has taken over a administration, federal administration building of a wildlife refugee center and it's causing a lot of hay, how about that? But what we really need to do is explain to you who Cliven Bundy is and kind of what's going on between some of the ranchers in Nevada and the federal government, not just Nevada ranchers, but Western ranchers. We really have to backtrack ourselves to the 19th century to try to explain any of this. Um, and we all know, of course, that most of those Western lands, specifically Nevada, was garnered by the United States from the Mexican War when it was ceded to us. And then Nevada became a state, of course, in 1864. But what most people don't know is Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution, which gives Congress the ability to kind of set conditions for statehood. And there was a bunch of laws passed for these Western states, and they were called Enabling Acts, which basically gave the federal government ownership over uninhibited, unused land in these Western states. So it could be utilized for the best interest of the whole United States. And Nevada signed off on this and that's kind of the way that it is. Over 80% of the land in Nevada is technically owned by the federal government. But of course there are many ranchers who use this federal land and one of them is the name Cliven Bundy. There he is right there. Now Cliven is a member of the Sovereign Citizens Movement and personally as an individual he rejects the authority and the legality of the United States government. To the sovereign citizens, to Mr. Bundy, the most powerful person in the world is the local sheriff. But this really all began in 1989 when the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service designated the western tortoise, tortoise, the turtle, as an endangered species. And they used this new classification to basically create some regulations to preserve some of that land in Nevada. And some of these regulations dealt with the grazing of cattle on federal land as well as the use of off-road vehicles to try to make this land usable for generations to come. So Clive and Bundy um, used much of that federal land near his ranch. He's, uh, his family has owned the ranch for more than 100 years. He's a Mormon. They've settled that land back in the you know, 1800s. And he basically refused to pay any more or to reduce the amount of cattle that were grazing on these lands, claiming that the federal government had no right to do that, that they didn't own the land, that the state owned the land. So he refused to pay the fines that started to rack up. And in 1993, his license was revoked. He wasn't supposed to have any cattle on that land. But of course, he didn't pay the fine and he didn't remove the cattle. And this has been going on now for 20 years and it's gotten violent at some times. Um, some members of the Sovereign Citizens Movement sent pipe bombs to the U.S. Forest Service in Carson City in the, in the mid-1990s. So it's gotten pretty serious. And there's been a couple court cases, um, Bundy versus United States, where Bundy has gone to the federal courts saying that they had no right to do this, that in fact it was the state of Nevada that owned this land and he shouldn't have to pay these fines which have now accumulated to over a million dollars and of course he lost both of those court cases and he still refused to pay in August of 2013 there was a letter sent to him giving him 45 days with the threat of the cattle being removed by the Bureau of Land Management of course he ignored that and then this all came to a head in April of 2014 where the Bureau of Land Management showed up at the ranch to try to remove the cattle and this is where Bundy uh, put out a call to his followers, to militiamen from across the western United States to gather at his ranch to fight what he saw as this unjust taking of his private property. And this uh, confrontation, which didn't involve any bullets being fired, certainly involved rifles being pointed at the federal government. Um, one of the wildlife trucks was rammed by an ATV, um, uh, one of Bundy's sons was tased and it started to get pretty heated. There were some people on the side of Bundy that were arguing that women and children should be put up front so if there was some kind of event that it would look like the federal government was shooting women and children. But needless to say, the Bureau of Land Management de-escalated all of this by just kind of walking away from the situation saying that it was too hot, it was too heavy, something bad was going to happen and they would get the cattle some other way. 
After this occurred, uh, Clive Bundy ordered the sheriff to de-arm all federal officials and bureaucrats in Nevada, and of course they didn't do that. That made him very mad. But that's kind of where that situation stands right now. Bundy has never really been punished for his million dollar fine or for refusing you know, to follow court orders of any of that jazz. But now we're in Oregon and how did that happen? Well, Dwight and Stephen Hammond, these were two guys that set fire to um, some of these lands that they claimed that they owned were state lands that the federal government didn't own, and they were convicted. They were convicted of arson, and they were sent to prison where they had to show up the other day. And that's when members of the Bundy family and the Hammond family, along with about 150 armed militiamen, took over this facility in Eastern Oregon as a stand, as saying basically that this building isn't owned by the federal government, it's owned by the people, and they're um, basically showing force to say that we're not gonna take it anymore. So that's basically the situation. You have the cattle grazing thing going on in Nevada. You have the arsons. Now you have this Oregon facility being taken over by the militia. And we're in a situation now where what happens next? You know, what do you think? Do you think that, hey, this is law and order, man. <laughs> the federal government should go in and bang heads up because they own this land and these guys are violating the law. If there was anybody else, they'd probably arrest them yesterday. And of course, there's that other side of the coin where people are saying that this is unjust, it's unconstitutional, the federal government has overstepped its bounds, and that these people are taking a stand for, you know, everybody in the United States. So you can leave your comments down below. It's certainly getting pretty hot and heavy. We'll see what happens next. But thanks for listening. We hope you understand understand it a little bit more. You probably should read and research to learn a little bit more in depthly. That's probably a smart thing to do always. So thanks for watching guys. Always remember where attention goes, energy flows.